good morning everyone so today we are going to deal with the automatic transmission system before that uh, we are to use uh, what are the different components uh, we are going to use in automatic transmission system that is a uh, roller clutch uh, planetary gear system uh, then we have the fluid couplings then we have the top converters uh, so these are the systems uh, we are going to use in automatic uh, transmission system so we are going in depth with the rest system so we have to in the last class we studied about a clutch uh, different types of uh, clutch and uh, what are the function of clutch then the transmission system manual transmission system that is synchronized uh, gearbox system uh, three four speed uh, gearbox system so that all the things uh, we have uh, gone through gear shifting mechanism now we are uh, moving with the transfer box so fluid flywheel torque converter uh, then we have the automatic transmission system so with this uh, we will finish today's class then we will in the next class we will study about uh, the torque tube drive askis drive and differential and uh, axle so these are the system uh, we will talk in the next class uh. so one more class we will finish the transmission system so now we will talk about uh, roller clutch or free wheel mechanism so this is also called it as a over running clutch that means uh, if you have a connection between this clutch if you are connected between two shaft uh, if you are having one shaft is running at lower speed you can uh, another shaft will be in the higher speed so in this way this uh, part will works so it will have the two shaft uh, for example we will have the shaft x and uh, y two shaft which are in a uh, coaxial means axis of the shoe two shafts should be in a uh, same line so in the this uh, over running clutch uh, it consist of uh, um, outer shell or outer race uh, uh, in between uh, rollers are uh, provided we can see over here so outer shell and inner shell will be there so in between that so we are provided with the rollers and uh, in the uh, outer part of the inner shell we have the tapered cam so these are the constituent of this uh, roller uh, cell so what is the points so, uh, how it will exactly works when uh, driving torque is uh, driving torque is applied to the shaft x uh, for example we say the driving torque uh, from the engine it is uh, applied to this uh, shaft x uh, the coupling works solid right coupling works as a solid right and turns shaft y as uh, at the same speed so as usual uh, whatever the speed it is are in the same speed y also rotate at the starting of the engine and this uh, coupling will uh, act as over running uh, clutch when it will act as a over running clutch whenever you decrease the speed of x whenever you decrease the speed of x what will happen it will act as a means a over running clutch during decreasing the speed of x y will rotate in the same speed y speed doesn't decreases so in this way this over running clutch will be working that means uh, whenever the speed of x is reduced y will running in the same speed that means y will having the more faster speed than that of uh, x so this is how your uh, over running clutch will uh, so in automobile this output shaft of the transmission when uh, after transmission this output shaft from the transmission it is connected to the overall uh, over running clutch that is output shaft of the transmission is connected to uh, x and y is connected to the propeller shaft so when it is running uh, this both shaft will be on the same speed that means so we will call that is a solid drive whenever the two shafts are running in a same speed then it is called as solid drive 
whenever the accelerator pedal is uh, slowed down slowed down that means uh, x speed is decreased but the speed of y will remain in the same so that is uh, the function of this uh, over running clutch so figure will shows this uh, over running uh, clutch so it consists of inner race uh, as already told so which is the driving part remember this inner race uh, will be the driving part or inner hub one and the same inner hub or inner race so that is called as a driving part and outer shell of the driven part outer shell will be driven part then inner hub outer side of the inner hub it consists of a tapered cam see we can see over here which is evenly passed on the circumference so equal distance they are placed the number of tapered cams outside of uh, driving uh, uh, shell or uh, inner hub so over that we have placed one roller rollers uh, each cam will have one one uh, roller so how exactly it will work we will see in the next slide so whenever uh, inner hub or uh, inner race is in uh, driving condition this uh, rollers are first off so whenever uh, this is moving due to centrifugal action uh, this rollers are moved moved up, uh, freely uh, at the starting it will be in the free space and it will be moved up whenever it is started to rotate and it will comes in contact with the space between the cam and outer uh, space and it will jams that uh, uh space so what is happen whenever the jamming take place uh, whatever the speed is rotating the same speed outer shell has to be rotated so in this way we are maintaining the same speed whenever the speed of the inner shell is decreased this is important whenever the speed is uh, decreased the inner shell that is the driving members which is connected from the transmission shaft so whenever the speed of this spin is uh, reduced what will happen the roller comes into the original position so there will be gap created between the inner and outer shell so outer shell will be the free to rotate so it will rotate at a faster rate when compared to that of a driving member so this is how the speed will be maintained same speed will be maintained whenever the speed of the driving member is that is so same speed it will maintain that means outer shell will have the higher speed than that of the driving member so this is how the over running clutch will rotate so since this makes this makes in the race to uh, slow down or even to stop even to stop and outer race will be continuously to run and this action is known as free wheeling remember so this action will be known as free wheeling even our the outer race will be in still in continual portion of running but inner race will be in a decreased speed or it might be it might be stopped so that action is known as free wheeling so this is how you are uh, over running clutch is working next we will move on to the system i think uh, already you have gone through this in uh, kinematics of uh, machines so already you know about uh, most of the things over here so i will uh, briefly i will describe uh, describe about this uh, planetary gear system the overdrive or automatic transmission system makes use of this uh, planetary gear system so in the planetary gear system uh, you know that uh, one outer ring will be there so that outer ring is uh, called as uh, annulus or which will have the internal gates inside that uh, outer ring we will have the internal gates next uh, we will have the pinions that is over here three planet pinions three planet pinions will be there which will be connected by the cages next uh, or we will carry uh, carry away by the carrier or cages next we have the sun gate which is at the center of your 
ring K. So, since this opinion will revolve around the sun game, which is similar to our solar system, sun is at the center and all the planets will revolve around the sun. Also, this planet will revolve around their own axis, similar way the pinion members also rotates around the sun game as well as it will revolve around themselves so it is just like your uh, solar planet system so different ratios of speed how we can uh, obtain uh, using this uh, uh, we can obtain by the planetary gear system mechanism so now we will see how different speed we can obtain with the, uh, this system so whenever you want it to different speed one uh, gear has to be fixed and uh, by making use of other two you either you can increase the speed or decrease the speed or if you want to change speed driving and driven should be same then what you have to do you have to fix any two element over there so whenever you fix two elements over here then whatever the speed driving will have same uh, will be speed will be there in the drive member that means solid drive can be obtained whenever the any two elements if you want to fix so if you fix any one element different speed ratios we can get either you may get increased speed or decreased speed depending upon the conditions so whatever the required conditions so now we will see one by one how you can increase the speed or you can decrease the speed by keeping which element to be fixed in this uh, planetary gear system so carefully listen because uh, next uh, while coming to the automatic gear system this uh, free clutch mechanism epicyclic gear painting fluid coupling or top converter all together one one unit is uh, combined and together it is called as automatic gear system so during that time i won't explain any kind of thing so just i will explain the how it will construction will be there so you carefully listen to this uh, uh, principle behind this uh, each component direct drive how to get the direct drive here the direct drive means what or solid drive means what the input and output so driving and driver member should uh, run at same speed so how to get that same speed you have to lock any two or three members in the planetary case system two members is enough three is not needed when the whole assembly is locked so whatever the speed is there there won't be any speed change or there won't be any reduction in the gear system so uh, it will directly connect it to a direct uh, uh, gear, driving gear to driven gear and so same speed will be rotated so that means uh, speed ratio will be 1 is to 1 there won't be any reduction in the speed so this is how we will get the direct drive so next uh, for your uh, easier reference uh, table has been made so conditions uh, so how uh, we will get uh, uh, speed that is increase or decrease increase decrease speed increase speed decrease speed increase speed decrease uh, whatever you are told now six cases uh, so in the table only we are given that means uh, s refers to the stationary d refers to the driven and t represent to the driver or uh, your uh, driving driving uh, member driving member so driving member is d d is a driven member so s is the stationary so for the first case to increase the speed some gear stationary your uh, pinion that is planet pinion gear will be driving member and ring gear will be the driven member similarly over here just reverse that one Similarly, over here we have kept ring gear uh, stationary. So, T will be the driving member, that is, uh, planet pinion cage will be the driving member, sun gear will be the driven, just reverse for this one. So, similarly, cage will be the stationary, driving this one. So, in this way, you will get the planetary gear system. So, this is how epicyclic gear driving will work. So, already you have gone through this uh, system. Uh, in uh, 
kinematics of machines uh, so just i will briefly i will explain this one so just uh, remember the principle behind this so how it will be done next uh, we will move on to the over drive uh, operation so over drive the uh, in order the over running clutch is uh, supplying to the transmission output shaft in the back of a supplying the pinion carrier so uh, in this uh, uh, the ring gear is uh, attached so ring gear whatever you are talked about in the last uh, slide the ring gear that will be attached to the overdrive output shaft and uh, there will be three planet pinion around the cage which is uh, supplying to the transmission of the main shaft the sun gear may be allowed to turn or may be locked depending upon uh, to keep stationary depending upon the condition required so either it might be turned or it might be locked the output shaft that for all drive transmission uh, given to the main shaft uh, when the sun gear is uh, locked so how it will exactly works uh, we will uh, go through the over drive operation so when the transmission main shaft so here it is uh, we have the gear shift uh, out box out box will be there from the gear so in this we are kept sun gear and pinion or planet gear so ring gear will be there then the carrier cage uh, will be there then it is plying so free wheel clutch or over drive clutch mechanism is attached over here so from that uh, we will get to the output shaft so transmission will be there so when the transmission main shaft main shaft and over drive output shaft over drive output shaft turning at same speed that means uh, when the transmission is uh, turning faster than the internal gear or over drive output shaft uh, uh, the sun gear is free to rotate whenever it is uh, running at spin speed sun gear is free to rotate and uh, over running clutch will be as usual so there will be a, there won't be any speed uh, uh, reduction won't be there and so uh, over running clutch will be as usual it will uh, works uh, the power directly goes to the uh, clutch cam in the over drive clutch cam and which will be spanned to the transmission shaft so the clutch cam will transmit the power to the rollers uh, to the outer rails uh, in the old line so which is attached to the output shaft so from the old line your power transmission will uh, take place so when sun gear is stopped or uh, whenever uh, there won't be a free rotation or whenever you are fixed uh, what will happen planetary action will be taking place uh, so which will drive the internal gear faster than the cage so that means whenever the sun gear is fixed uh, now we have to go through the condition so we have to increase the speed so with respect to that condition one because sun gear is fixed uh, cage pinion will be there from the pinion we have the ring gear so ring gear will move faster so that ring gear is connected to the output shaft uh, so hence uh, uh, speed of the output shaft can be increased so in this way overdrive operation can be done so in this uh, whenever the drive is uh, uh, means uh, output shaft is more speed during that condition you are uh, uh, this one uh, overrunning clutch will be in a disengaged portion so in this way your overdrive operation will uh, take place uh, this is how exactly overdrive operation works. Next, we will move on to the fluid coupling. Very important because uh, in fluid coupling, uh, we have to transfer the torque. So, from uh, one shaft to other. Uh, we are going to transfer this uh, shaft. So, this is one method we are uh, adopting for uh, transfer of our torque that is the fluid coupling so fluid coupling or uh, another name is hydraulic coupling is a clutch used in your power drives so 
when this uh, mechanical coupling is uh, engaged uh, for connection of uh, engine transmission it utilizes the oil so there will be uh, blades will be there in the revving and driven motors uh, rotors uh, and uh, between that uh, gap you are filling the oil so that oil will transfer that power from driving to driven member so for example if you want to understand a simple example we have the two fans which is having a small distance one fan is connected to the power point and we are running that tap so in between two fans so we have the fluid we can say a is the fluid so when one fan rotates since the distance is not that much big that one fan rotation of causes air has to carry that higher density and that higher density air means uh, we are pushing pressurizing that air that pressurized air will hit the blades of another fan which is stationary and thus uh, another fan will also run so this is the basic principle involved in its uh, fluid coupling so one uh, fluid will carry that power and uh, it will rotate that uh, another member so driving from the driving part to driven part how you will transmit that torque that is very important so using this concept your fluid coupling will work so what it consists of two rotors one it is uh, connected to the engine crankshaft that is the driving member another to the transmission shaft that is the driven member so these two do not have a direct contact with each other as i told they are kept in a separate way so small distance will be there and driving motor uh, driver driven motor is free to slide on these planes of the transmission shaft so spline is providing a uh, transmission shaft so there will be free to slide of a driven member and uh, whatever the wall space is there in the driving and driven members so that will be filled with the oil and the radial ribs or veins of these members uh, forms the passage so this is how uh, your fluid coupling uh, look like sir. so we can see over here so this is the driving member rotors or blades uh, over here similarly for driven member separated by the gap and whatever the gap is there uh, between this uh, rotors uh, so we will have the fluid over here so this driving member is uh, connected from the crankshaft of the engine and uh, this one is going to the driven member is going to the transmission shaft so driving motor driven motor so we will have and flywheel will be there opposite to that uh, driving and uh, driven motors so this is our uh, look like silver uh, fluid coupling so now we will uh, move on to the operation so what will happen whenever the engine starts whenever the engine starts so what will happen oil carried around the veins of your driving motor engine start means your crankshaft will rotate oil carrying in the driving motors will also feel the centrifugal force so this will rotate the so driving motor will rotate so whatever the oil will be there inside that uh, it will cause the centrifugal force uh, since oil also moves in a circulating path of the driving member which will be thrown out from this uh, space from this space it will be thrown out due to your centrifugal force so which will strikes the uh, place or veins of your uh, driven motor so in this way your driven motor also starts to rotate so turning effort will be given to the driven motor so this uh, process will continue until uh, the speed of the crankshaft and transmission shaft will become equal so whatever uh, we have to turn back of oil from over here to the driving member to the driven member this is repeated motion of this uh, process is known as vortex motion so the water due to centrifugal effect of the oil from the driving motor it will be forces to thrown out from this member to the driven member so this process will continue till 
the speed of this uh, crankshaft and transmission shaft will become equal. So, whatever the thrown out process is there from driving motor to driven motor due to centrifugal action. So, that process, repetition process is known as vertex motion. Next, what will happen as the engine speed increases? Driving member runs faster and faster, causes horse to strike the veins or blades of the uh, stationary element of driving uh, driven element, imparts with greater turning force over here. So, driven member also rotate. When uh, speed will become uh, equal, so rotary flow also will become constant and uh, there won't be any vertex motion, won't be exist. So, centrifugal forces uh, drawing the oil here also will be there, here also will be there. So, there will be nullified effect will be there. This uh, cancels the vertex motions. Now, try to understand a more different way how it will exactly. So, we have the driving member, driven member. Driving member uh, is noted by the A which is uh, running at a speed n1 and a driven member is noted by the b which is uh, at a stationary initially so fluid from the a will be thrown out into the b due to the centrifugal force at the lower speed so this speed will increases and finally becomes equal okay uh, then the coupling is uh, set to be engaged so whenever the speed will become equal then uh, coupling is set to be engage now consider the fluid particle p which is having a distance of r1 from x x axis and uh, this particle has to rotate in a circular way so distance will be from r1 so we have to circular way it has to rotate with having the kinetic energy of uh, kinetic energy is given by half into m square half into m into v square is given by 2 pi r n1 square r1 means distance and this n1 is the speed so next uh, as the fluid moves uh, away from uh, p to q over distances over here it is uh, large and centrifugal force will be more that is linear speed will be becomes more 2 pi r 2 into n and uh, your kinetic energy also increases uh, because uh, engine is developed that energy and distance is small, centrifugal is small, hence kinetic energy also will become more at a point Q. So, if you consider the particle at R, so this will impact the speed over here. So, R, so again the kinetic energy will be more. When it comes to the S, the kinetic energy will become less. So, and so once that uh, speed is achieved, then there would be a vortex motion will be there. So, we will get the equalized speed. In this way, torque will be transmitted from one shaft to another shaft through fluid coupling or we will call it as fluid flywheel. So, this is how we exactly working of fluid uh, coupling will be done. Next we have the torque converter. Torque converter. So it is a similar way what you are talking about fluid coupling. Fluid coupling what it does? So, it does so, transfers the same amount of torque one shaft to other shaft. There is no multiplication of torque. Over here, the, most of the component will remain same except one component that is here one component is added that is the state or you can see or one the guiding uh, blade it is added along with the uh, normal winds so one state is added over here what it does it will multiply the torque it might be in the ratio of 2 is to 1 or 3 is to 1 along with the transmission of the torque it will also does the multiplication of the torque. So, this is the main advantage of torque motor when compared to the fluid converter. So, construction is uh, similar to your fluid coupling uh, with uh, one important difference is as I already told. 
we have the stationary element over here that is called a station uh, stator or uh, one more name is reaction member so in the top converter we know that uh, as already told it increases or multiplies the torque in the ratio of 2 is to 1 so what will happen uh, in top uh, converter the driving member is uh, referred as a driving member what you call driving member in the chart uh, as already told this uh, in this driving member it is referred as a pump so this is called as pump or impeller one and the same so this is called as pump and driven member it is called as turbine so in operation what we are pump will operate your turbine so pump always represent the uh, driving member and turbine will represent the driven member when uh, driving and driven member uh, consist of curved veins as shown in a uh, figure these are the curved veins uh, curved veins will be there over here and oil gradually flows from driving member to driving member due to centrifugal uh, force uh, as you know so oil strikes the vein oil will uh, strikes the vein we can see over here oil uh, this is the nozzle just uh, not exactly it will look like so just uh, to understand the concept to be given over here this oil will uh, strikes the veins uh, so as soon as oil strikes the vein driving member which will uh, cause a uh, rotation of the driven members and so torque will be transmitted from one member to the other member when uh, speed of these two members becomes equal what will happen so whenever the speed will become equal there will be a relative weak moment between the oil moment of the oil will be very less uh, which is similar to your uh, fluid coupling but when uh, driving members after reaching the same speed so there won't be any vortex motion and so whenever the driving member turning faster than the driven member what will happen again oil is uh, thrown forward through the enough velocity into the driven member causes a bouncing back effect because once it is achieved the same speed still if you want to increase the speed of driving member so there will be bouncing back effect so if you neglect that uh, whatever the state uh, present over here if you neglect that uh, or if you think that it is that a uh, part is not there oils move around curve in the driven member and so leaves the trailing edge and of the veins rapidly so there is a change in the flow direction or uh, might be back flow will causes so what will happen whenever the back flow will uh, causes uh, back flow of the turbine or in the uh, driving edge of the blade flow will cause us so this uh, opposite for rotation of your driven member so it will uh, flow in a lesser uh, speed and so there will be a problem with the whenever the speed of the driving member increases uh, there will be a problem so you can't convert that uh, torque so to overcome this uh, problem an additional member stator is uh, used in the converter so what will does uh, stator so that uh, it will work smoothly because uh, whenever the stator is used it doesn't give the flow back effect to the trailing edge of the blade so hence uh, it will rotate smoothly so what will does uh, this stator as you see over here stator is provided so whenever the stator provided over here what will happen sir uh, it will reverse the direction so whenever the direction is reversed as it flows in the driven member the oil will enters into once again into the driving member which will be favorable direction because uh, in the driving member already it is uh, achieves that speed so whenever the stator are uh, provided over here so whatever uh, increase speed over here that will be passed back to the one driving member so here we can see whenever the e2 over here stator it will uh, comes back to the driving member so once uh, it will be favorable condition for fluid once it uh, uh, comes to the driving member so we will get the 
increase in the torque so means uh, we are getting the more uh, speed and uh, speed will be the over here will be less and then so torque generated will be more in the driven member that means so uh, torque has been a multiplier so for exactly how we do the operates uh, we can see over here next uh, slide So this figure shows uh, operation of your uh, single stage uh, torque converter. So it consists of one uh, impeller. Impeller, as I already told, it is the driven member, a uh, driving member, sorry, mounted on the engine crankshaft. Next uh, turbine will be the turbine will be the driven member, which is connected to the road wheels through this transmission shaft. Next one will be the stator or stationary element. Uh, mounted on a free wheeling mechanism so free wheeling mechanism that is over clutch mechanism or running clutch mechanism so output shaft your input shaft will be the exactly opposite way we will have the uh, flywheel over here so whenever the impeller starts rotating which will push us the oil into the turbine uh, due to centrifugal force uh, uh, which is initially at uh, stationary condition. So whenever the oil strikes your turbine, uh, it exerts force and uh, this will rotates and uh, vehicle will move. So turbine blade angle will uh, changes the oil flow direction so that it becomes uh, comes out uh, of the turbine at the center. So it will uh, turbine center exit of the fluid will take place. Uh, if there is no stator, oil pushes the impeller in the opposite directions. So this impeller, uh, whenever uh, opposite direction uh, effect will be there on the blades, uh, what will happen? There will be loss of power will take place. So to avoid that one, we are using the stationary member or stator used to, to change the direction of oil flow. So which will be favorably so that uh, enters the impeller in the helping direction see we can check over here direction of the oil flow so if this stator is not there it will create it over here and it will comes in the opposite direction means uh, there will be a problem of uh, power loss if uh, station uh, stator is not there so once the stator is there it will give the proper direction for the fluid so it will uh, again once again it is going into the impeller to a proper channel in the same direction of the fluid flow where it will goes so what will happen this uh, repeated uh, pushing on of the turbine veins uh, so what will happen whenever the impeller again it will comes to the turbine so more force will get over here so and so more torque will be generated so this uh, repeated uh, pushing of the oil of in the from the impeller to the turbine veins increases the torque on the turbine and phenomena is called as that kind of phenomena is called as torque multiplication or uh, torque converter or uh, torque uh, what you will call uh, addition in the torque so that is phenomena is called as torque multiplication phenomena so this is possible only when there is a difference in the speed of the impeller and turbine remember torque multiplication is only possible whenever there is a difference in the speed between the impeller and the turbine so whatever the speed uh, difference is there if the speed difference is more that means uh, we can generate uh, higher torque if the speed difference is less then we have the lesser torque modification that's it so maximum uh, torque increase can be produced uh, might be around uh, 2.1 to 2.6 okay if uh, one more thing is there in this uh, if the impeller is uh, running fast if the impeller is running fast at the engine speed and turbine is stationary and that condition is known as stall condition stall -L. so that is during the starting portion starting portion whenever engine start this one will be in the uh, greater speed and your turbine will be in a stationary condition so impeller is running fast and engine speed 
at the engine speed and uh, turbine is in a stationary and that uh, condition is known as stall condition S T A L L. so we should know what I mean by stop whenever the car moves uh, which will increase the turbine speed top multiplication gradually decreases so then because the both speed will become so equal so whenever the top multiplication will become infinity both top members are turning at the same speed so this is how your top converter will multiply Next, we will have the epicyclic gearbox. So, in epicyclic uh, gearbox, uh, it is nothing but uh, consist of uh, two, three, or even four epicyclic or planetary gear system. So, whatever you have talked about, uh, planetary gear system. So, same thing will be there over here. Um, Either it might have two or three or even four epicyclic gear sets. So uh, depending upon the amount speed is uh, required. So if the member is released and another one is brought in rest by using the brake, another train will be brought into operation. That is nothing but one member you have to keep stationary. As I told in the epicyclic gear, uh, gear train, one member has to brought stationary so that is using the brake mechanism you can use uh, that uh, gear system to be in a stationary so one that uh, comes in stationary either you may increase the speed or uh, decrease the speed so depending upon the driving condition you require so this is how your epicyclic gearbox uh, works so we will go through principle or how it will uh, works this is the diagram so what will happen so the one that is the spring over here so this is the spring then uh, two that is your flywheel then the three and four that represent at the top this uh, represent uh, your uh, band brake and uh, seven and eight is your drum brakes so drum uh, drums will be there and three four will be the brakes and um, five will be your uh, driven shaft and six will be your casing where your uh, gate lines will be there nine will be the driving shaft and uh, s1 some gears s1 s2 s3 similarly pinion gates p1 p2 p3 so this is how your epicyclic gearbox uh, look like now We know that planet uh, gear P1 will mesh us with uh, gear S1. Similarly, planet gear P2 with S2, P3, S3. So, operation will be very simple. Uh. So, if you know the correct concept of uh, gear train operation, if you know that gear train operation, then this one will be very simple. So, what will happen? We have to keep uh, one element to be stationary. So, how we have to keep that one element stationary using the brake pad that element has to be kept stationary so if you use the brake pad for your sun gear s2 will be the stationary by applying the brake over 4 on drum 8 so on drum 8 if you keep this uh, see you can check uh, over here connection how it is uh, so cut section directly it will go and it will directly goes to the s2 so if you are keeping applying the brake on the four brake drum uh, four brake and drum on eight then s2 will become stationary so once s2 become will stationary so how the power will transmit power will be transmitted from s2 p2 p1 s1 because so it is connected to driving member is connected to s1 s1 p1 p2 s2 from that it is going to the driven shaft so since uh, sun gear S2 is smaller than uh, S3, that means uh, we are having the slower speed. That means the top gear we are having S1. So this is how it will pop. So, next, uh, if we apply the brake 3, brake 3 is connected to what? S3. So apply the brake using the drum 7. 
So what will come? S3 becomes stationary and this continues uh, gate one or it will be power will be transmitted S1, P1, P3, S3 to the driven shaft. So in this way your uh, operation will be done and power will be transmitted. So by locking 7 and 8 what will happen? S2 and S3 will be locked. So direct connection will be there. So whatever the speed is the same speed it will rotate and it will give to the so two system you have to lock so that direct drive will be obtained. So this is how your epicyclic gearbox will works. So next we will go for the once you come to know all the components. Next we will move on to the automatic uh, transmission system. So automatic transmission is system is combination of all the system what we are talking till now. So combination of all the system will come into picture then we are the principle of automatic transmission system. So automatic transmission system as we say it is easy to operate it will uh, give the feasible for driver so but cost will be more it will be expensive manufacturing cost will be expensive. So automatic transfer shift according to with respect to engine speed so it will condition feedback it will take from the engine speed and load condition then it will automatically shift the gear so whichever the speed you require that will be get um, you will get by according to the condition speed and load so essential component we need converter torque converter housing then case oil pan extension housing so torque converter and efficiently gear train and multiple clutch so these three combination of these three it will give the principle of automatic transmission system so automatic transfer broadly classified into two types one is semi-automatic one more is the fully automatic in the semi-automatic Clutch's operation is automatic, the, whatever the clutch engage or disengage of the gear. But gear selection is manual. Nowadays we are not using that much semi automatic. Fully automatic only we are using. Fully automatic means clutch operation as well as gear selection. Both will be automatic. Gear changing is then by pressing the accelerate pedal. That means uh, depending upon the speed, it will change automatically. So if you want more speed, you have to press more accelerator pedal so that uh, you will increase the speed this is how uh, consist uh, and it means uh, basic of uh, types of automatic transmission system now we will move on to the construction part of the automatic transmission system so this is how uh, we have the automatic transmission system we can see over here that is the torque uh, converter torque converter in that turbine impeller stator will be there Next, after torque converter, T represented by I will be the impeller and S will be your stator. Next one, uh, we will have the drums, D1 and D2. So, D1 will be over here, drums, D2 over here. So, drums will be there along with that, uh, brakes will be there, B1 and B2. So, B1 brakes are over here and B2 will be over here. So, two brakes are there. Next, uh, F one way clutch, F represent one way clutch, only one way clutch. Then C1, C2 are the other two clutches uh, where you can see over here S1, S2, P1, P2 are the sun and planet gears. Uh, you can check over here S1, S2, P1, P2. So, these are the planet gears and uh, R will be the planet carrier or uh, uh, planet cage, what you talk, planet cage. So that is your opinion planet clutch. So this is your R and uh, A will be the annular casing. So A represent your annular casing or the gear box. So what will happen? So this is uh, automatic transmission system of uh, pork Warner automatic transmission system. So this consists of single stage uh, torque converter as you know single stage torque converter coupled with the epicyclic gearbox so epicyclic gearbox which gives three forward and one reverse speed ratio so speed three forward will be there one reverse will be there and turbine and impeller are integrated with the d1 and d2 so with the 
of clutches C1 and C2 where uh, when the C1 is engaged when C1 is uh, engaged that is this clutch uh, is engaged drive directly goes to the some S2 so it is directly goes to the S2 whenever uh, C1 is engaged the drive goes to the S2 and um, if B1 brake is applied so if B1 brake is applied it gives a lower gear ratio lower gear ratio and second gear is obtained how we have to obtain apply brake B2 so whenever you apply brake B2 instead of B1 sorry B2 instead of B1 so while applying brake B2 what will happen one way clutch F F whatever F will be there that prevents uh, planet carrier R so that will be prevented from rotating backward but it allows uh, for uh, forward direction of rotation backward direction of rotation it will uh, blocks but forward direction of rotation it will uh, allow so and uh, if C1 and C2 both are uh, engaged simultaneously the gear is uh, locked so gear is locked and a solid drive is possible so whatever the shot is there solid drive is uh, possible and for reverse gear C2 has to engage and uh, B2 will be applied B2 will be applied and C2 has to be engaged and the uh, drive will goes from uh, S1 to P1 so S1 to P1 the drive will uh, goes as annular C and planet carrier uh, B uh, fixed and the same as well as planet K also being fixed while uh, reversing of the gate. So this is how your uh, automatic transmission system will uh, work. Uh, so this will complete the automatic transmission system. The remaining part in the transmission systems are uh, propeller shaft, inversal joint uh, and uh, slip joints. Then we have the drives uh, before that the differential and axial will come into picture then the drives or uh, torque tube drive and uh, Hotchkiss drive so these are the two drives so we have to study so another one class so we will complete the transmission system so this many portions uh, covers only one unit of this module so as already beginning itself I told very lengthy module but uh, very easy module just you need to draw the diagram properly so go through that diagram once again so if you have any doubt you can ask with me so thank you